Well, good morning, Wellspring. How you doing out there today? All right, you're doing okay. Well, I mean, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Timmy, how are you doing today? I know, all right. That was a little weak, though. Uh-oh. Well, maybe they should be louder. Good morning, Wellspring. How you doing today? Yes. Oh, you guys are so excited. It's a holiday weekend, but you're here. Um, we are, we're excited to be here, too. My name is TJ. This is my good friend, Timmy. As I said earlier, um, he's here. Uh, we're, we're in Plaid together. It's cool. Glad we're like we're bros. Plaid. Plaid bros. I'm glad. So glad for Plaid. Plaid. That's right. I'm in a weird mood. You are. Anyway, so if it's your first time weird. here, this is not normally us, but we're, uh, we're having a great day today, and we've got a great service plan for you. And, you know, over the next hour, we're going to sing a few songs. We're going to raise a few hands. We may do a little dad dance in the middle of the aisle, so feel free to do that. And uh, just I'm enjoy not doing yourselves. That, that dance. I don't know what that was, but that was weird. Yeah, not I told happening. you, weird mood. It's here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We are so excited that you're here. If it's your first time, you can go ahead and scan the QR code on the screen or on the seat backs in front of you. And if it is not your first time, maybe you've been here a bunch, but you're looking for your next step, you can also find that there. There's all kinds of stuff. When you when you scan that QR code, it takes you to a connection card. Uh, you can fill out, hey, I'm interested in volunteering. I'm interested in uh, getting baptized. All these kind of different things, but also prayer requests, things like that. So, Or if you have like a question, like why did Timmy dance like that? You can write that right there on that connection card. Um, so we want to make sure that you fill that out as well. Yeah, you know, so there's a lot of great stuff coming up, but I want to talk about we have a new series coming out next week called Mind. Monsters. Mind, mind monsters. Right. We're going to learn how to think about what we think. Kind of want to yeah. know what's how going to in. think about what we think. How, I still. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll get that. Yeah. At some point. His, there's a monster in your mind right thing, now. I look at this screen. Just burrowing its way about. right in there. Yeah, it's going to be a great service. And also, is what I think also about. next week we have uh, baptism, beach baptism coming up. So make sure that you sign up for that if you want to be baptized next Saturday. That link is going to go away sometime later this week, so you need to make sure that you sign up today. Scan that QR code, you can sign up. Or if you just want to come and cheer on some people who are being baptized, it's always fun, it's always awesome. I looked at the weather, it's going to be great. So make sure that you are there for beach baptism. It's going to be a great week next week, you don't want to miss it. That's enough about what's next. Right now we have a great service, so stand up, greet someone next to you, and let's sing.
Jesus this morning. Come on, love 
your name is good. And you come suddenly. So God, that's what we're asking this morning. Sometimes we sing it over and over and over again till we believe it. So God, bring to our memory, bring to our minds what you've done before and what you will continue to do. So God, we're asking you to come suddenly. Come suddenly in whatever we're facing. God, because you can make a way. When there's no way, you make a way. So God, that's our prayer this morning. That you come suddenly and you make a way. We love you and we praise you for what you've done, for what you do, and what you will continue to do. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Good. Better, right? Better now that we're here and we've set our hearts in the right place. If you don't know me, my name is April Colquitt. I'm the children's pastor here um, at Wellspring. Sometimes I have an opportunity to um, share the message and and to teach some things that God has taught me. And so I'm excited for today. Um, If you know my husband, Eric, he's also our student pastor. So together we lead family ministries here at Wellspring. And we actually have three children of our own. We just sent our oldest off to college. I can't even talk about it. Um, I'm better. I'm getting better every day. (laughs) And then our middle son is 16. His name is Sam. And then we have a daughter who'll be 13 this week. So um, our house is full of teenagers. And um, we love what we do here at Wellspring. And so every year, I don't know if you guys are like this in your family, if you have children, if you've raised children, at the end of the summer as we sort of transition into a new school year like many of us have just done, we start to sort of recalibrate our family to the rhythm of school. We have to sort of start shifting our, our schedules back around being ready for the new school year. And so when our kids were really little, we used to do really fun things. Like we'd have a back to school night on a Friday night and we'd have like drills and they'd get in bed and their PJs and we'd set a timer and we'd see how fast they could get up and get ready for school and run downstairs and like eat a banana. And whoever won was like, you know, so excited. If we did that now, they would not think it was fun at all. Um, Now what we do is we have little family talks over tacos while we talk about clear backpacks and, um, reigning in late nights and setting alarms again and those kind of things. We do not call it family talks. So if you do this at your house, I do not recommend calling it family talks. They will automatically shut down when you say those words. Instead, it's simply coded dinner time. You'll have a lot more success if you just say dinner's ready than if you say family talk time. That's not going to work. But we kind of just will sometimes have an agenda over dinner where we know, Eric and I sort of internally know, we are recalibrating our family's values and our priorities as we look to what's ahead. And the reason that I share that with you this morning is because that's sort of what we've been doing here at Wellspring for the last few weeks. We've been having a family talk, if you will, that we've been calling the big picture. And this conversation that we've been having for the last few weeks has largely been about church and the big picture of church. The very first week of this series, Trey asked us all to consider what pops into our mind when we hear the word church. When we get a bunch of people in a room like this, or if you're watching online, you're with us this morning too, there's a lot of different ideas when we think of church because we all come with our own experiences and are all, we all have all of these different circumstances that we're walking through And with that come a wide variety of expectations about what we expect to find in or what we hope to gain from a church body or community of faith like this. And so once in a while, we believe it's helpful for us to recalibrate to God's design for church because he's the one who created it. So for the last few weeks, Trey has been reminding us of what the church is and how specifically this church seeks to align to God's design, that rhymes, 
aligned to God's design. You can remember that. That was good. How we seek to align ourselves with God's plan and God's design for what church is and how we can all find our purpose and our place and our people right here in God's church. And so if you have missed the last few weeks of this series, or if you've missed one or two here and there, I want to challenge you to go grab our Wellspring app, catch up. That's the easiest way for you to catch up on sermon series and things that are going on here in our church. But if you have recently started coming to Wellspring, this series will be one of the best ways for you to get to know us a little bit better. But even if you've been coming to Wellspring for years and you think you know all there is to know about who we are as a church or about church in general, this is such a good series. I believe it's helpful for all of us to look back and to be reminded of what the mission and vision is of this church so that we can all unite around it. And I also think, and I know and have experienced that when we do that, we're also reminded of how God has transformed our lives here. And it gives us sort of a renewed vision and purpose to keep moving forward as we look at what's coming and what lies ahead of of us and what God might have next for us. So go back and watch this series. It's so, so valuable. But to catch us all up to speed this morning and make sure everybody's sort of on the same page with me, I want to go back to how we've been um, thinking about church and how Trey has started describing church to us He says, church is a group of people that believe Jesus is the son of God and the hope of the world. So if you believe this, you are the church. You are part of the church. But even if you don't believe this yet or you're not sure what you believe about Jesus and you're still checking things out, we want you to know that you can still belong to this family. You can still belong to this community of faith. We were reminded last week that Jesus extends an invitation to all of us to come to him and find rest, the kind of rest that we can't get in anyone or anything else in this world. He extends that invitation to every single person to come and find belonging, to come and find rest with him. And once we have encountered a community of faith, once we've experienced Jesus then we can choose whether or not we'll believe in him. And as we believe in him and we start centering our lives on Jesus and focusing our attention on him, we start to become more and more like Jesus. And that is God's plan for us. It's a simple invitation for all of us to belong, to believe in him, and to become more like Jesus as we live out his purpose and plan for our life. But no matter what phase of faith you might find yourself in here today, I want you to know that you are welcome here. We are so glad that you're here. And I want to just tell you full disclosure, it is our prayer that you will be captivated by Jesus, that you will experience something here and that you'll want to know more. But so today, Trey has asked me to sort of wrap up this conversation that we've been having about the big picture about church. And as we do that, I want to go back to the second part of the description of church that Trey gave us the first week. A group of people that do all they can to help others believe the same thing about Jesus. The first part of this description is about who the church is. And the second part is about what the church does. And this is where I want us to focus the rest of our time together this morning in beginning to understand what exactly it is that the church does to help people believe the same thing about Jesus, to help other people believe that Jesus is the hope of the world. What exactly is it that we do? And the reason that we want to talk about this morning This one thing is because this one mission is the one mission Jesus gave us before he left the earth and went back to sit on his throne in heaven. At the very end of Matthew's gospel, he talks about exactly what Jesus said before he left the earth and went back to heaven to be with the Father. Jesus has just said, all authority in heaven and on earth is mine. I am over all things. And then he tells us this, Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He's clearly giving us an instruction to go do something to help other people believe that he is the hope of the world and know how to follow him. 
He's clearly giving us an instruction. But a lot of us hear that and we think, well, that is for full-time ministers and pastors and missionaries. And how in the world am I supposed to make a disciple? I barely know anything about God. I didn't go to seminary. I don't have the Bible memorized. So that can't possibly mean me, God. That can't possibly be something that you want me to do. Or some of you hear that and you think, oh, great. This is where they tell me to sell half of my possessions and move across the world to spread the gospel. And you don't want any part to do with that. You're fine to not do that. But I want to tell you it's not as complicated as all of that. It's really not. To help you understand what I mean, I want you to think about how you got here today. Not physically how you rode to church this morning or what vehicle you came in, but what brought you to the point of your faith that you are right now? Whether you're in the belonging phase, the believing phase, or maybe you are in the becoming more like Jesus phase, what sparked your initial interest in Jesus? Or better yet, who sparked your interest in Jesus? Do you know, some of you might have come here because you were just curious on your own. You began exploring things about faith on your own based on your circumstances, or maybe you had a crisis in your life, or you're just a really curious person and you like to search for answers. But statistically speaking, that's about less than 8% of people seek out Jesus on their own. Somewhere around 9%, research tells us, that about 9% of people start going to a church because they're interested in the programs that are offered there. But more than 80% of people will go to church if someone they know personally invites them to church. More than 80% of people will go if a friend invites them, if a family member invites them, if a personal acquaintance invites them, they say they would go to church. Now, I know anecdotally speaking, just looking around this room, that is true for many of you in this room because I know your stories. I know some of your stories. And you are here right now finding belonging, believing, deepening your faith and becoming more like Jesus because someone personally invited you to come. So for the next few minutes, for the purpose of this conversation today, I want you to think about this question. Who invited you to Jesus? Whoever that person is followed Jesus' command. They followed Jesus' instructions to go make disciples. When they shared with you something about how Jesus was changing their life, when they prayed with you, when they pointed you to Jesus in a difficult time in your life, if all that person did was invite you to come sit with them at church, they fulfilled the Great Commission, which is what we call Matthew 28. Go make disciples. That's the Great Commission that Jesus gave us. And whoever invited you to Jesus, if all they did was say, hey, come sit with me at church. Come sit with me. Come to my church. They fulfilled the Great Commission. They imagined a hope for you that you had not yet imagined for yourself. They imagined a hope for you that you maybe didn't even know you needed yet. So I want you to think about who invited you to Jesus. Here's the thing. A person cannot believe in or become more like Jesus until they first have an encounter with Jesus. And most often, an encounter with Jesus begins with an invitation. I bet most of you know that Jesus had 12 disciples and when he chose those 12 disciples, he did not post a job description or have interviews with a bunch of people. He simply invited them to come along with him. He simply said, come with me. It was an invitation. But did you know that some of the disciples were invited by other disciples? If you read their stories carefully, you'll discover that some disciples like Peter, James, John, Nathaniel, they were all invited by another disciple who had discovered Jesus and they went and told their friend or in some cases their brother about Jesus and invited them to come meet him too. And so this morning what I want us to do is look at one of those stories because it teaches us that finding belonging and believing 
and becoming like Jesus begins with an invitation. And an invitation makes an impact. As you're thinking about who invited you to Jesus, I want to walk through this story with you because an invitation makes an impact. And I want to show you the kind of impact that it makes. If you want to follow along with me in your, on your Bible app or in your Bible, we're going to be in John chapter 1 this morning, the very first chapter of John. John became one of Jesus' disciples, and he recorded all of these things in his book. But in the first chapter of John, he introduces us to a different John named John the Baptist. I would love for the purpose of today just to call him JB. Is that okay with you? John the Baptist, JB, I think Jesus probably had nicknames for most of his disciples, and so I think it's fun to have nicknames for Bible characters. JB was Jesus' cousin, and he was the one that God sent sort of ahead of Jesus' ministry to begin preparing the way and teaching people that a Savior was coming, that the Messiah was on the way. And JB also baptized Jesus, and so we're going to jump into this story the day after he's baptized. In John chapter 1... We're told the following day, John, that's JB, was again standing with two of his disciples. Now, Jesus' ministry started later than John the Baptist, and so John the Baptist had sort of his own group of followers who were interested and curious about the things that he was teaching about the coming Messiah. So he had his own followers. That's who this is talking about. And they see Jesus coming down the road. It says, as Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, look, there is the Lamb of God. He says, hey, there goes the man I've been telling you guys about. There goes the hope of the world, the one who's come to save us. And it says, when John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. They, they were like, that's the guy that you won't stop talking about. We're going to go follow him and see for ourselves what this is all about. And so they take off down the road following Jesus. Jesus is walking along the road. And you know how you can sense when somebody's following you? You could just tell there's somebody back there. Jesus could tell because John says he looked around and saw them following and he said, what do you want? They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? They want to know, where are you going? Basically, can we come over and hang out with you for a while? And of course, Jesus is all about it. He wants them to come not just see where he's staying, but he wants them to come see who he is. How many of you know that when you invite someone to Jesus, you're not just inviting them to a house, you're inviting them to come see Jesus when you invite them to church? Jesus says, come and see. Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying and they remained with him the rest of the day. Now, because of the time of day, four o'clock in the afternoon, and they stayed the rest of the day, we can pretty safely assume that they stayed for dinner. In my mind, they're sitting around a campfire. These two guys have lots of questions, so they ask their questions, they eat dinner together, and they listen to Jesus teach and talk and explain who he is. And we're told that we know one of these men was John who became a disciple and he's the one that's writing and telling us the story. But the other one, he says, is a guy named Andrew. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. And then Andrew went to find his brother, Simon, and told him, we have found the Messiah. So basically, Andrew spends one afternoon with Jesus and he becomes convinced. He believes that Jesus is the Messiah as John the Baptist had told them about. And he goes and immediately wants to tell his brother, Simon, about him. He goes and he finds his brother and it says, then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. He went and invited his brother to meet Jesus. Now, we don't know what Simon was doing when Andrew went and found him. We don't know if he had heard anything about Jesus. We don't know if he cared. Who knows if he was lounging on his couch. Maybe he was working on his fishing boat. We don't know if he had plans that he sort of begrudgingly canceled because Andrew would not leave him alone unless he came with him. Maybe he said, fine, I will go. But what we do know is that when he came with Andrew, that invitation changed his life. Here's what happened. When he got to Jesus, it says, looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, 
Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. I love how this translation says that Jesus looked intently at Simon. Jesus sees us not just for who we are, but for who we will become with him in our life. And when we are deeply seen, deeply known, and unconditionally loved, it's life-changing. And Andrew had just experienced it, and he wanted his brother to experience it too. When Peter comes and meets Jesus, it changed his life. It changed his life. The name Peter, roughly translated from Greek, means rock. I don't know if you know this, but Peter eventually became one of Jesus' closest friends and disciples. He was on the inner circle of that group of 12. And it took him a while to become solid in his faith the way that his name suggests. He's had sort of this up and down journey with Jesus. But after Jesus' death and resurrection, Peter's purpose became very clear. He became an important leader in the spread of the gospel. Jesus at this moment spoke purpose into Peter's life. But it wasn't until a little bit later that he identified with that purpose and he began spreading the gospel. We're, we're told in the book of Acts later that Peter preached to a group of thousands of people and more than 3,000 of those people believed and were baptized. All because John the Baptist called out, hey, there goes the hope of the world. Andrew was curious enough to follow after him. And then Andrew invited Peter. Thousands of people believed and were baptized because Peter followed the invitation from Andrew. And who knows how many thousands of those people invited people to come and meet Jesus who later invited people to come and meet Jesus and those people invited people to come and meet Jesus and here we are today belonging, believing, and becoming like Jesus because Andrew invited Peter to come and see Jesus. That's why I'm saying an invitation makes an impact Think about all of the things that we get so tied up in knots over that we invite people to. Birthday parties, weddings, graduation parties. We get all up in arms about it and we throw these big parties and it's so much fun. But in a few hours, those parties are over. When we invite someone to Jesus, it's a different kind of invitation. It's an invitation that outlasts us. An invitation to come to Jesus is an invitation that outlives the invite because it makes an impact. It makes a huge impact. I bet Andrew never imagined how inviting his brother to come and meet Jesus would change his life and how it would impact other disciples and how it would impact thousands of people and even impacting us still today. And all Andrew did was say, hey, you've got to come meet this man I just met. Which, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but Andrew did not have to pass a test or recite scripture or wait this certain amount of time before he could go and start inviting his brother to Jesus. He just did it within a few hours of meeting Jesus, which means if Andrew is qualified to invite someone to Jesus, so are you and me. We can do it too. And sometimes we hesitate because we don't want to be told no, and then it's sort of an awkward conversation after that or we don't want someone to feel judged because we're inviting them to church and they don't already go to church somewhere or maybe we are just afraid of being told no but I want you to think back to how you got here who invited you to Jesus an invitation makes an impact so how has the invitation for you to come impacted your life is it better are you learning to love better? Are you finding community? Have you found purpose? Have you discovered a hope that you didn't even know you needed? If the answer is yes, you need to do two things. One, you need to thank the person that invited you. You need to text them today. You need to call them. If you see them in the lobby after this, you need to go hug their neck and say, thank you. Your invitation has greatly impacted my life. I am being transformed here. Thank you for inviting me. But then, 
we also have to recognize that we can keep the invitation going. We can keep the invitation alive when our life has been changed, when we have believed, when we've found belonging and we're becoming like Jesus. We can do what Peter did. We can start inviting people to Jesus the way that we were invited to Jesus. My friend Ashley um, she, she's told me that when she first started inviting people to Wellspring, she would be so nervous to talk to them about it that she would plan out what she was going to say before she knew she was going to invite them. And I love that, and I actually think it's a great idea. So I've done the work for you. I'm going to give you the script. <laughs> and you don't even have to write it down. It's so simple, you can memorize it right now. It's five simple words. Are you ready? Here it is. Come sit with me Sunday. Come sit with me Sunday. You can add emphasis wherever you want. Come sit with me Sunday. Come sit with me Sunday. Come sit with me next Sunday. You'd say it however you want to. Let's practice it together right now. You ready? Come sit with me Sunday. You can memorize that. You can say it. Every single purpose person in this room can say Come sit with me Sunday. Here's the thing. Every single person is networked with a different group of people. So when we invite someone, it's a ripple effect that keeps going. It snowballs until we're spreading the hope of Jesus to the world over and over and over. We are fulfilling the Great Commission. So if your life has been impacted by an invite, the question for you to answer today is who could you invite to Jesus? Who invited you to Jesus? And now, who could you invite to Jesus? Because when we invite someone, it makes an impact that outlasts us. It outlives us as it begins to change the next person's life and the next person's life and the next person. 15 years ago, Eric and I came to be a part of Wellspring Church. We moved here from Texas. And at that time, Wellspring was meeting in a movie theater. And one of the first messages that I heard Trey Kelly preach was about inviting. And he preached from Mark chapter 2, where some friends bring their paralyzed friend on a mat to Jesus because they believed that he could heal him. And at the end of that message, he challenged us to think of five people who we could invite to church. And he gave us an index card and he asked us to write down the names of five people. I still have my card and it stays in my Bible. And full disclosure, I only wrote down four names on my card. (laughs) Don't tell him, he's not here today. I wrote down four names on this card and I started praying for those people and for an opportunity to invite them to Wellspring. One of them was my coworker and my friend, Ashley Lentz. And some of you know Matt and Ashley Lentz because they come to church even now. They're heavily involved in Wellspring. And Ashley, it took some convincing, I'll say that. But you know, you might know that couple because they said yes to an invite to come to church in a movie theater. We've removed that barrier. You can invite someone to come to a real building. But I asked Ashley and Matt to share a little bit of their story with you and about their experience inviting because they have found belonging here, their faith has been deepened, they are becoming more and more like Jesus and their life has been changed. And as a result of that, they have become what I like to call invite machines. It seems like they are always inviting someone to come with them to Wellspring. And so I want you to hear a little bit of their story. Check this out. I was invited to Wellspring Church by April Colquitt, and we worked at the preschool together for um, just a short period of time uh, before she first invited me. She and her husband had moved here to uh, start Wellspring Church, and they thought that that would be a good fit for us, and I declined. (laughs) (laughs) So 
Yes. Um, mm. I was working multiple jobs um, and we were new to Myrtle Beach. We were young, we were just married. We had other things that we did. And so um, after quite a few invites, um, a mutual friend of ours had offered to kind of go with me. And so we decided to check it out. So our lives have definitely gotten better as we've gotten more involved with the church. Um, everything from our, our marriage to the way we've we want to raise our kids. Um, all kind of is foundationally comes from Wellspring and what we can talk about here and do. So, so much to me of inviting, it's um, having those relationships with people. And I feel like when you have that relationship, you kind of know what needs to be fed in them. And when they come to church, it's just, I feel like they're able to sit and kind of just receive that. Um, and so some of those friendships that we've we've had and we've invited them. Um, it's been neat to see God work in their lives, especially in, in some times of desperation, yeah. I think. A lot of times when they're going through something, um, you know, loss of loved ones or tough, you know, losing jobs and stuff like that. Um, you know, stuff that can push you one way or the other. Um, so it's great to have that ability to have them come here and kind of refocus and um, basically try to get them to heal through that that process so I think inviting people has been a process for me because in the beginning like I said I feel like I needed to say a certain thing or do you know do something for them in order to get them to come or something so um, I think that's been something that's kind of evolved for me because now I again kind of try to have that relationship with people where you're you're inviting them because you care about them you know and this is our this is our home away from home this is a place of comfort and we know people are loved here and so inviting is such an easy thing to do now but when we first had started coming i think i just like shared whatever wellspring was sharing on social media and you know that's kind of how i would drop that um, if you get the urge or you know, a gut feeling that says to invite someone, I mean, go ahead and do it because, you know, God's already speaking to them in one way or another. And sometimes it's not just inviting somebody for the first time, sometimes it's re-inviting somebody. So we've had that where, you know, I mean, 2020 was wild and people got comfortable watching from home or um, we've had friends who have had babies and, you know, same thing where we fall in and out of routines. And so sometimes it's inviting people who have been here yeah. back. We've noticed too, it, with us inviting, that then those friends are inviting. And if they're not, they should be. <laughs> A lot of them have started serving and then becoming you know, more, connected. more connected to the church and then start to invite as well. So uh, to see, yeah, like you said, that snowball type effect of, you know, just inviting one or two people can lead to huge growth for for both the person as well as the church and um, just. And I think it's neat to be on the other side of the invite, you know, I mean, it took me so long to say yes. And I know the personal effect that that's had on our family, generationally really, because now with our kids being so involved in the church, um, that's a very personal story to me, but I'm that to somebody else or at least I hope I am. Yeah. An invitation makes an impact. It makes such a huge impact, more than we could ever possibly know or imagine. I love how Matt talked about when you are prompted to invite someone, do it because God's already preparing. Trey says when, when God prompts, he also prepares. He's already opening the little crack in that person's heart, arranging the details for them to be here at just the right moment. And even if they say no, 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 all of a sudden, one day, they might walk through the door. They might say, okay, fine, I'll come. And God begins to move in their life. It can happen that quickly. And I love how they talked about the snowball effect. I don't know if you caught this or not, but I actually wanna throw this picture back up that we saw in the video. These are just some of the people 
who Matt and Ashley have invited to Wellspring Church. And if you look at this picture, you might recognize some of the faces in this picture because many of them have served with your children. They've held doors in the lobby. You've met them in Bible study groups or you've met them in the lobby standing around talking. These are just some of the people and it makes such an impact because those people are now finding belonging and believing and they're becoming more like Jesus here. They're the hands and feet of Jesus. And this is a generational change. It doesn't just impact that person, it impacts their whole family tree. About half, maybe more than half of the children in that picture have believed in Jesus here and been baptized already. That means that their family trees are literally being changed as a result of the impact of that invitation. That is why this matters so much. It's an invitation that outlives us when we invite someone to Jesus. So I don't know who invited you. Maybe someone in that picture invited you here. Maybe someone 15 years ago wrote your name down on an index card and prayed for you to be here. I don't know if you've been around for 15 years or 15 months or 15 weeks, or maybe you just experienced Jesus for the first time 15 minutes ago. But wherever you find yourself in your phase of faith, whether you are belonging, if you're beginning to believe, or if you are becoming more like Jesus, if your life has been impacted by an invitation, I wanna challenge you today to ask, who could you invite to Jesus? Who could you invite? And ask them to come sit with you Sunday as we start a new series, because you never know the impact that that invitation might make on someone, on someone's family, on someone's marriage, on someone's life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for inviting us to belong. Thank you for giving us the choice to believe. And thank you that you see us as we are, but you also see us for who we will become with you. God, thank you that you do not leave us where we are, but you imagine a hope for us. You know a hope for us, God. And I pray that as our lives are being changed, as we are becoming more and more like Jesus every day that we would invite others to experience and to know and to believe that same hope that better is possible. God, I pray that you would give us the courage to invite, that we would not hesitate, but that the words would come easily and we would trust that you are also already going ahead and preparing us for that invite and preparing the person that we're inviting. God, we want to see the hope of Jesus spread around the world, and we want to be a part of it. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for seeing us. Thank you for knowing us as we are. And thank you that you always want better for us, Jesus. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, April. An invitation truly does make an impact. As we just saw, what an impact that one invitation had. So we want to make it as easy as possible for you to invite. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. I want everybody to take their phones out. All right. Everybody get your phones out. She gave you a statement earlier to remember, but we're going to take that a little bit further. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to download the app. If you don't have the app, we've got a QR code here on the screen. And as people are uh, downloading the app. Uh, I just want to remind you that the app is the yeah, best place to go. It's the easiest place to, to go to keep up with all things Wellspring. You can go and watch uh, messages from past series. You can go and uh, get information. You can sign up for things. Uh, you can see what events are coming up. Uh, it's, the, it's a one-stop shop for everything Wellspring. So go get the app. So now that you have the app, I want you to open it up. We're going to do this together. I'll get mine out. 
So once the app is open, what I want you to do, the next thing I want you to hit the refresh button that's at the bottom, or you may have to pull down. Um, And at the very top, you'll see a banner that says, come sit with me. Now it's at the top right now. It won't always be at the top, but it'll always be on this first page. You may have to scroll. We've created a a, a come, come sit with me spot. So click on that. Then it'll give you some information about uh, some things there. But the most important thing is the share button. You'll see the share button. So click on the share button. Then you'll have some options that'll pop up. Some ways that you can then share it. We recommend that the best way to share this is through text or through email. I'm going to go ahead and click text because I'm going to text my good friend Graham. I'm going to invite him. And then when you click the next thing, Uh, it'll pop up, it'll pre-populate the location of the church. It'll populate the times. It'll give, it'll tell you the website. It'll show you uh, a link to the YouTube page so they can go and watch messages. So it's right there. In just four clicks, we're able to invite somebody uh, to Wellspring. So we hope that you'll do that. We hope that you'll invite someone this week because an invitation truly does make an impact. And so uh, every single week here at Wellspring, we celebrate something else that makes an impact. And we do that through a giving moment. Hey, Wellspring, it's time to give our offering. We celebrate in this moment because we know that all that we have is from God. One of our core values here is that we get to give We get to come to this moment and give back to God because he's given us everything. And as we give back to him, we're able to be a part of all that he's doing and the impact that he's making through our church every single week. So we gladly come to this moment and do that. If it's your first time with us today, we're so glad that you've joined us. The only thing we'd ask that you give us, the gift to us, is just to let us know that you're here. You can do that by scanning the QR code in the seat back in front of you. Fill out a connection card. Just let us know that you're here. If you're watching online for the first time, thanks for joining us. Just click the link in the chat. Fill out uh, the connection card there. Thanks for being here today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this reminder today uh, about the power of invitation. Lord, help us uh, just to invite those around us because it makes such a big difference in people's lives. Thank you for Uh, Just this encouragement today, help us to take those steps to invite the people in our lives uh, to come see you. Thank you for this opportunity to give. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as the buckets are being passed, I I do hope that you'll invite somebody this week. Uh, As we said earlier, we're kicking off a brand new series next week called Mind Monsters. This is going to be a great series. Uh, It's it's an important series to invite to, um, and we hope that you'll do that this week. But we're so glad you've came today. It's been an incredible day, but we do have one more song to sing. So if you will, stand to your feet and let's sing together.
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop.